Welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today, we are working on our final episode of our seasonal Minecraft boss. That's right, the Pumpkin has finally met his match. In the last video, we learned about the final bullet hell phase that we could create for him. And in this video, we're going to talk about drops, things to give your players, and some arena abilities to spice things up, uh, and making the whole event feel like an actual boss fight worthy to be inside of Minecraft. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, let us get back into our command block room down here. Um, now, we've gone over pretty much every command block in here, uh, how everything kind of fits into the bigger piece, and when the pumpkin reaches his final phase and finally falls. But, what is a boss without loot? So, you'll notice that uh, by default, the pumpkin will still drop things like bones and arrows because that is an Astray's loot table. Now, on MC Stacker, when you're creating your boss, you can actually path to different loot tables in the Minecraft directories. But what I found even easier, if you don't really know how to do that, especially if you want to make your own custom loot tables, is if you make the mob holding something in its offhand, main hand, or any of its armor slots, you can actually just give it a chance to drop it there. So in our Summon Pumpkin command block, uh, we actually have it wearing a helmet uh, that looks like a jack-o'-lantern called the Pumpkin's Head. Uh, and it has a small chance uh, to actually drop that, as you can see right here with the head. Uh, the armor drop chances is uh, 0 0.2 uh, for everything else, and then 0 0.8 for the head itself, um, which is pretty cool. So if you have it with a cool enchanted head or any enchanted armor that you want the players to get, you can give it uh, a percentile chance to drop. This one here is 80% for the head, um, which I thought was valid because you want to give the players so a, a pretty good chance of getting something. I also have the Pumpkin's Blade uh, somewhere in here. Um, which is a, uh, I believe it's a hoe that gives the players max health when they hold it, which is something else you can set up in MC Stacker pretty easily. Um, and I think that has a much lower drop rate of, I think it's 8% total. Um, but that is how you can set up loot uh, that they can drop um, in their main hand or off hand uh, or anything that they're wearing, uh, which can be particularly useful if you have entities that don't necessarily show their armor. Um, like silverfish or things like that, if you put something on the boots slot, they're not, they don't actually show the boots, but you can have them drop boots, um, nonetheless, which is pretty cool. Uh, but, you know, having the players just grind the boss over and over again until they get whatever they're wielding is fun and all, but maybe we want them to drop some unique materials. Now you'll notice from the last pumpkin I killed, there's actually this bit of purple dust that spawned, uh, with a small little firework effect right here on this grass block. And if I pick this up, you can say I have a bit of it now. We have the Spirit's Essence. It's a spooky essence of the Hallowed Eve used for spooky trading. Uh, now, what the heck is this actually for? Well, this was for the Halloween event that I ran on the server, but I'm going to show you how you can set up the mob to drop any custom loot, although it works better if you're uh, fighting a boss in an arena like this one. So if you come onto our uh, Remove Pumpkin Chain all the way down here, uh, I think it's one of these uh, towards the end. Remember, you got to set all of your scores back to zero uh, once you create all of the scores that you want to. Uh, should be right here. So, uh, when the pumpkin dies, uh, we want to execute if there is a player within 40 blocks. So, if the pumpkin despawns on his own, let's say he kills every player and then, you know, it becomes morning, he despawns. Um, this will not happen. However, if the pumpkin dies, which is in this chain of command blocks, and there is a player within 40 blocks, we are actually going to run the summon command and summon an item at this block location. Uh, so specifically at the block that I just showed you up top in the arena, um, and it will be the end reborn essence, although you can use glowstone essence or anything else that looks like dust, which I thought was cool. Um, and you can give it all the custom tags you want to. So here I gave it the custom tag with a name, called it spirits essence with a color, um, and set up the lore and everything like that. And this can all be set very, very easily on MC Stacker. Again, a fantastic website that you need for any command block usage. So this drops, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So you get a couple of uh, these that drop whenever you kill the boss. Um, specifically here, if you go into count, you can set how many. I set four, so every time the boss is killed, you can have it drop four. You can actually change this, so you, if you want it to uh, only drop as many players as there were, you can execute it um, as every player at every player, uh, and then it will act not just the nearest player, uh, it will drop however many players there were in essence. So if you're fighting the boss with seven players, it will drop seven essence, which is pretty cool. That uh, item itself was just to be used for trading on my server during the Halloween event, um, but let's say you want other unique things that the players can only get one time for killing the boss. 
Uh, well, that comes into uh, this command block right here. We actually have a piece of paper. Similarly, this one executes as all players, at all players. Um, so this is just for the amount of players that there are. And we're going to actually summon the item into the player's inventory or directly on the player with uh, 0.5. So it looks like it just zaps into their inventory. Um, and what this is, is actually a bit of paper um, that has a shining enchantment on it, just so it looks a little sparkly with a couple tags, such as the name as a Hallow Eve title with a whole bunch of lore. I can actually just show you it's in my inventory right here. Uh, a ticket that marks the title of slaying the pumpkin, use it at the Hall of Heroes to redeem your special title. Uh, so what this is, it spawns for every player that was around the arena when the pumpkin dies, just one per player. Um, and what it means is you can actually redeem this on my server uh, to get a special cool title in front of your name when you're walking around and chatting. So long story short, if you leave any item in this kill pumpkin chain um, and have it execute at the nearest player or at all players, it will only ever happen if there's players near the pumpkin when it dies, you can have it drop any cool item you want. Now to make this noticeable for your players, if you're doing it in an arena or even if you're not doing it in an arena and you want the players to find where this actually happened, I have a little particle of a firework playing at the exact location where I have the item spawning. So even if they're not looking in that direction, they'll hear and see and look over to see the uh, the firework. So that is all of the loot uh, when it comes to uh, my pumpkin and what he drops. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys do to get creative with your boss drops. But there are a couple more things that we can do to actually spice up the fight and make it feel like a full experience. So we have the boss bar, we have uh, all of the cool phases and everything, we have minions. Um, but the arena itself, uh, I touched upon this a little bit in the first video, um, where you had this cool little teleport function where you could actually walk into the arena and walk out of the arena. Um, the beacon that goes off as soon as the player spawns. But we do have these big pumpkins over here that throughout the boss fight will actually teleport up and light up later on, um, which is pretty cool. So to do something like this where you can actually augment your arena, we are going to drop back down. And I have a couple sections of arena blocks over here. These are things that happen when the pumpkin is alive and then when the pumpkin dies to turn everything off again. So if we come into our arena on section here, uh, you can see that we are actually uh, cloning the pumpkins from down here. So just in case those pumpkins uh, moved up in combat um, or you know they got destroyed somehow, we are cloning them back up to the top as soon as the uh, arena is on. And the arena is on as long as pumpkin lives matches one which you can see right there, uh, is a scoreboard. We know we have it set up. Um, and unless the uh, Pumpkin Arena set matches one, so this means it will only trigger once, because at the end here we have Pumpkin Arena set going to one. Um, we're also going to, so this clones both pumpkins back onto the arena, um, and then it will only happen the one time. Here, you know, we have the particles going off uh, to let players know when it's midnight. Uh, just like before, if the time of day matches 17 between 1900, we're going to run the enchantment particles. Um, and this one is to actually ensure that as long as the pumpkin is alive, all falling blocks around the area will actually do damage to players. But resetting the arena is equally as important. So if we come over to the arena off function over here, uh, we have if pumpkin lives now matches zero, unless uh, pumpkin arena also matches zero, we're going to clone the pumpkins back to normal, where they should be, um, make sure all of the air is there, and more importantly, a couple of these uh, replace these three blocks right here. So if you ended the match and the red sand is still all right here, uh, turning the arena off will actually get rid of some of these red sand blocks right there as well. Um, we are filling, yep, that's filling those with air, uh, and that's what that does. So that turns all of that off, and of course, resetting the beacon glass this one I didn't put in the chain because this happens directly after the uh, pumpkin spawns of a little bit of lightning. Um, so what happens is uh, on the first attack, we actually have if pumpkin attack one matches 80. Um, so after about four seconds, we are resetting that beacon block of stained glass back to grass. Uh, so it looks all normal. So down here, we actually have our little clone section. So this is when the pumpkin reaches his final phase. Uh, the pumpkins turn into the big jack-o'-lanterns. Um, and we have this down here to clone just in case we ever need it, and all of the red sand to clone as well. So that's how you can do things like move glass around the arena, um, set terracotta to be different around the arena, uh, setting up your arena in all sorts of different ways. Now, you could get very creative and actually teleport a whole uh, chunk of blocks around that players might need to parkour around using clone commands and stuff, and then as long as you make sure in the arena off, you clone them out of there. 
Um, but the clone command is very, very useful for different phases of the arena. Originally, what I had wanted to do uh, was up here. As soon as the bullet uh, hell phase happened, I actually wanted to turn the ground into lava and have only a couple uh, parkourable blocks, so it was like a huge dodge bullet hell fest. Um, but after some testing, I realized this proved to be even more difficult uh, than the players would need. So I just changed it back to it staying grass throughout the arena. But that is pretty much all you need to know about uh, the differences in the arena and all of the cool blocks that you can set up with the loot um, and stuff like that. Now, to keep this as a full event, you know we have it triggered in uh, a very specific way. Uh, over here, we have the Summon the Pumpkin basically only if it is around midnight and if players have that very special item that they need to throw into the hopper um, is how the pumpkin actually checks uh, if it wants to summon. But as this was a seasonal event, uh, it's also very easy to disable this and you can just go to any of these um, command blocks that you want to turn off, it should be the summon pumpkin one, and set it to needs redstone. That way, uh, it will still all be here for the next season, or if you want players to be able to come off season, but you'll need to reactivate this. Uh, which means people can't just come over and over and over again uh, attacking it as much as they want if the season is already over. So if you set that to need redstone, or any of these to need redstone, they just will not activate. Uh, which is exactly what we want. Uh, and finally, uh, just in case you want to make sure that the pumpkin dies nearly immediately when there's no players around here, if we come into this block down here, I have a command block directly in the center of the arena that basically says, hey, execute if there is not a player within 25 blocks, and we're going to kill the pumpkin. This means if players somehow manage to ender pearl glitch their way out of the arena to cheese the uh, pumpkin a little bit so they can't get damaged by the bullet hell, well, if they leave the arena, the pumpkin will die on its own. And remember, unless players are within 25 blocks, the command block down there, it will not actually drop any uh, any goodies. Um, so leaving the arena to cheat the pumpkin will not work under specific circumstances, which I think is always an important thing to do. Well, as the sun rises on our final tutorial video, uh, we've done it. We've successfully set up a boss encounter with the pumpkin and the arena with a couple of different phases, health drops, and the whole sort. So. Before I leave the video today, I just want to give a big thanks to all of you who are watching the series. Uh, let me know if you guys come up with any cool uh, designs for any of your boss monsters, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. It was really, really fun to put together, and I was honestly very shocked that I was able to do all of this in vanilla uh, using just command blocks. It took a little bit of a toll on my server, but the players all really enjoyed it, so that was definitely worth it. And before I leave, I am going to leave you guys with uh, an actual battle of the finished product of the Pumpkin. So, until next time, guys, see you!